South Africa can be a dangerous place, with law enforcement having little control over the violent crimes that happen frequently in the country. And some of these crimes might seem as though they were taken from a Hollywood movie script. And they are well-known kingpins who are serious career criminals and the police are doing little to stop them. Additionally, whole entire families have built empires from dealing in the underworld and through their connections with the higher ups, managed to evade consequences. What's also unique about the South African crime landscape is that going back to the 1970s, the 80s and the early 90s, the original black mafia or black organized crime groups emerged from the taxi industry. Now due to the limited opportunities that black people had back then, criminals would invest their proceeds of crime in the taxi business and then use the business to launder their dirty cash. You see, the taxi wars over lucrative routes over the years bred seasoned hitmen, dangerous characters and those who are brave and ruthless enough, thrived and got rich in such environments. And concerning families who own taxi empires, they are mostly known to be notoriously dangerous and the more money and taxis they have, the more ruthless they become. During the court proceedings of the late rapper aka and Tibbs' case, it was revealed that a member of a notorious family from KZN could be involved in the payments of the suspects. You see, everybody was surprised to hear that one of the Gaba brothers may be involved because these are people you don't want as enemies. You see, they have influence and power, especially in the KZN region, and they are connected to the former president, Jacob Zuma. The Gaba brothers were born from different mothers and their father Mkulegelwa Simon Gaba started the taxi empire in the early 70s. You see, the affluent businessmen owned several enterprises in Umlazi Township including Sonke and Mama's Bakery. You see, Simon had five wives and was assassinated in Feb of 1996 in a suspected taxi violence hit. The Gaba family are taxi owners. They have a fleet of over 500 taxis, including buses. You see, the organization owns one of the largest taxi operations in the country. See, Simon Sons took over the family business and made it grow and spread throughout the KwaZulu Natal province. You see, years after their father was assassinated, the Gaba Brothers organization has become a household name in South Africa. The brothers are nephews to former President Jacob Zuma and they were accused of financially sponsoring the July 2021 unrests after Zuma's arrest. And it was also alleged that they financed Zuma's political campaigns by transporting his teams all over the country. As the country awaits the identities of the alleged provocateurs of the rampant looting in Assan of the past week, the controversial Gaba brothers want to clear their family name. Following the arrest of former President Jacob Zuma two weeks ago, unidentified voice notes began making rounds on social media calling for the unrest. Some of the voice notes were alleging that the Gaba brothers had sponsored the routers with transport services. In a recent voice note, a woman alleges that the Gaba brothers are planning to transport supporters of the former president to a shutdown planned for Monday, 19 July, at the East Coast Correctional Center. Uh, it might be that... Uh there is this thing that we are, we are the relatives of Mr. Zuma. And therefore, because we are the relatives of the former president, then people have got this <coughs> notion and this thing in their heads that we might be sponsoring the violence or we might be financing it or whatever. The, the, I, the, I, I can't really tell you where this thing comes from. And the party, we think our biggest sin is that one, that because of the relationship that we've got with the Zuma family uh, and the former president and his family, therefore people have got this uh, thinking in their head and this assumption, but which is not true. We've got nothing to do with anarchy, looting, theft and anything that is happening right now. The Gaba Brothers organization has been linked to various criminal activities, including murder, extortion, weapons trafficking, and other illegal businesses. 
You see, they are known throughout South Africa for being ruthless to many who have dared to cross their path. It is believed that the Daba brothers have used their wealth to buy the loyalty of several police officials and powerful politicians. Now, Mandla, Stembiso and Mfondo are the most famous Daba siblings. You see, Mandla used to head and manage the Daba brothers' taxi empire and he's probably the most prominent in the family and many say he's played a key role in transforming South Africa's taxi sector. In 2012, Mandla denied using political influence and being Jacob Zuma's nephew to get a 300 million rand Port Shepstein transport contract. Now the contract went to Ugu Transport which was 80% owned by taxi operators and 20% owned by a smaller bus operator including Mandla's Amandla Emigaba Trading's company. Tembiso is another famous Daba brother. He has over 30 taxis in his fleet and bought two new Quantums for his firstborn son in October of 2020. Now in March of 2021, he was driving his Mercedes-Benz AMG 63 when the police arrested him. You see, the car did not have any registered plates and they found him in possession of 70 stolen Sasa cards and in them, they each contained 7,640 rands each. Now the cops confiscated the items and the car before arresting him for allegedly withdrawing money at an ATM in the CBD using the stolen Sasa cards. Now a USB was found after allegedly being thrown out of the car window. He was taken to court and charged with fraud, theft and possession of stolen property. Now the charge sheet showed that Stembi Sogaba made 133 withdrawals and all of the money combined went up to 239,400. Now, the Durban Magistrate Court granted him a 5,000 rand bail. Mfundo is another popular member of the Taba Brothers organization. He was among the 11 men accused of participating in a shooting at the Brook Street taxi rank in 2015 which killed people. Now, the shooting was believed to have been provoked by a long-distance dispute between Songke and Zamogushe Long-Distance Taxi Association over a specific route. Mfundo allegedly was the driving force behind Songke's illegal invasion of the minibus taxi routes that caused the shooting at the Brook Street taxi rank. It's exactly a month since the deadly shooting at the Brook Street taxi rank. Three people were killed, including an innocent bystander. Several others were injured. The clashes were linked to a feud over taxi routes. Twelve suspects were charged in connection with the incident. In court today, the gallery was packed to capacity, with a heavy police presence in and around the courtroom. After three weeks in custody, the men were granted bail. Amongst its reasons, the court says the investigation into the case could take up to a year and denying the accused bail would not be in the interest of justice. However, he did give them bail, uh, bail conditions and that they were not to go to the Brook Street taxi rank and added to that also not to interfere with or intimidate any state witnesses as well as government officials uh, while they are out on bail. The case was remanded to the 18th of January 2016. Until then, the accused were ordered by the court to report to a local police station every week. Now the court heard that a day after the shooting, one of the suspects and alleged orchestrator of AKA's head, Mziwete Mbakwabeni, made a call to a number linked to Mfundo Kaba. And shortly after that, money was transferred to his account. Now, as I'm recording this, the family raised concerns that authorities have not yet approached Mfundo to share his side of the story. Now, this is what they said. We believe in the principle of fairness and the right to be heard, and we urge that this opportunity be extended to Mfundo at the earliest convenience, and it is crucial to understand that Mfundo has assured the family that he has no connections to any illegal activities, nor does he has any motive to engage in such. That's what they said. 
Though the state claiming a Guazulu Natal businessman is the alleged paymaster in the murders of rapper Kenan, aka Forbes, and celebrity chef Dibelo Tibbs Motswane. The allegation emerging during the bail hearing of five men accused of killing the pair in a suspected hit on Durban's popular Florida Road. This was in February of last year. Karinda Jack. The money was transferred from the bank account of the company. Bright Cycle, PTYLTD. According to the company records, Mr. Sidney Fundatlaba, Mr. Sidney Fundatlaba is the sole director of this company. When the money was transferred, a reference was used as consult. This, we are of the view, was done to disguise the nature of the funds as same is viewed to be payment for the shooting. My team and I currently are currently investigating the source of this and any other funds that may have been used for the planning and execution of these offences. Now one rumour that has been circulating on the social media streets is that the Kaba family may have close ties with the family of the late Anele Dembe, who was AKS fiance when she died. Now the prosecution team needs to prove that the money paid to Kwabeni was for the hit because at this moment Mfundo has not been proven guilty of anything and Kwabeni's life is in danger now because he is the link between the paymaster and the suspects. Now what I'm wondering is, if they lose the case, is Guabeni going to take the fall and possibly spend the rest of his life in jail, or is he going to tell? People who are involved in this case are rich and they can afford to bribe a lot of people and drag the case in court for years. We've seen with the lawyers and advocates that the suspects hired, clearly Somebody who's sponsoring this has got money for days because these people are expensive to hire. As for now, the whole country's got its eyes and ears on this case to see what unfolds.